oh dear, wow, I'm telling Oh, it's totally nerve-wracking, you know. <laughs> I think, as far as um, any outstanding thing in my uh, growing up years, there was nothing really outstanding except, I think we were fortunate as kids that um, we had a lot of freedom to do as we wanted. My dad, of course, with his brother and his brother-in-law, had the farm down at, called the Brickyard, where the ranch house is. And uh, <clears throat> that was a wonderful place. A lot of my summers were spent down there. Um, my friend Dorothy and I used to go over the top of the big hill down to the ranch. And one time she took her little dog with her. And my aunt raised every kind of fowl that uh, was available and her turkeys were free range so we got down there by the creek and this dog spotted the turkeys well there was turkeys going everywhere they were up in the willow bushes they were flying through the air <laughs> my aunt was running out of the house wondering what was happening with her turkeys <laughs> we corralled the little dog and, and we went home in a hurry that day but it was uh, created quite a stir Actually, there was 13 years, there still is, 13 years difference between Gordon and I. So, um, he was a pest. He was a real pest. I had a, a lamp in my bedroom with a cut glass base and, and uh, stem. And uh, the one thing I remember, he grabbed my lipstick and he went all over this lamp with this lipstick. It was all nice bright red and try and get that out of cut glass and then I got the mumps and I can remember him coming in here I was and he stood at the foot of the bed and just totally broke up laughing he thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever seen and probably was but. Uh, most of the houses had barns behind them and there was a big barn behind our house, and um, we made it into a girls club. And we used to make up plays, and we'd, um, our parents were forced to come and sit in a plank and probably pay 10 cents to get in the door and watch these <laughs> plays. I can't believe we did it. But the highlight one time was uh, uh, one of the girls from next door, she was tall and gangling, she decided she was going to do the fan dance with rhubarb leaves. And uh, my father grew a lot of rhubarb, so these were great big rhubarb leaves. <laughs> so Jean had this fan dance all concocted, but we never did air it publicly. It was not for, uh, not for release, but it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen, <laughs> these rhubarb leaves and legs and arms flying. Um, when I got into high school, I can remember particularly one room in the four-room school was used as a lab, and we were taking physics, and, and um, one of the boys was having to hook up these batteries in parallel series so that they would work, and he was leaning over them, and somehow he, he really loused it up because his sweater went on fire. And the whole sleeve went up in flames. <laughs> then another time, the same physics teacher, who I'm sure was a nervous wreck after he finished in Cochrane, he asked this one boy, or asked the class a question, and it was dead silence. And finally, he turned around and he said, Please give me an answer, even if it's just goodbye. <laughs> he was at his wit's end, but it was interesting. But I did graduate from grade 12, and I was the only one. And they even put on a supper for me in the basement of the old community hall. So 
something else. We were still, we had moved into residence after our six months and I got this horrendous nosebleed after we come off duty in the evening. And the girls were trying to stop it with towels and handkerchiefs and it wouldn't stop so they phoned the head nurse from the hospital and we called her Black Mac and she always wore black stockings and shoes and had her hair done up in a bun and she was very intimidating. So she come over and she'd just take about three foot strides. She could cover half that hospital in, in no time. And she come up and she took one look at me and all I can remember is her saying, oh my God, she's broken an artery. And I thought, well, I'm out of here. I, I'm gone, I'm dead. <laughs> so they pushed me in the wheelchair and took me over to the hospital and one of the doctors was there and up the operating room and they packed my nose and I stayed in there overnight and then I was away again. But I'll never forget that. I thought, after all this, and I'm going to die and I haven't even <laughs> done anything here yet. <laughs>